This video is going to show you how to do this first problem from the multivariate descriptive statistics class exercises. So we have some manufacturer of floor waxes and they've developed some new wax. Uh, the company's considering two different containers for the wax, one of which is plastic and the other is metal. So the company decides to make its final determination on the basis of a limited sales uh, test in which the plastic containers are introduced into a random sample of 10 stores and the metal containers are introduced into an independent sample of 10 stores as well. So we've got 10 stores where we use the plastic containers, 10 stores where we use the metal containers, and then we observe the following sales results. Now, the first thing you have to do is type the data into SPSS. We're going to have a column labeled sales, another one labeled material. And um, so one thing, uh, well, let's, let's go over to SPSS here. And then uh, here we are in SPSS. We can kind of see both windows. Um, the general rule in SPSS, this is, this is quite important. Uh, is, is as follows. We're going to have one row for every sampling unit. So for every observation, we're going to have one row, and we're going to have one column for every variable. So now you have to think about what the observation is in this data set. So the observation is um, sales in a store. So what we really have is 20 observations. It may look like there's only 10 observations, but there are really 20 observations here because each one of these is, is entered into a different store. All right, so um, let's, go, um, let's go do that. Uh, I'll, I'll just type them in here. Hopefully I don't make any mistakes. And so far so good, I think. And now we've entered the 20, um, uh, 20 values uh, sequentially. To enter a variable name, I go over to variable view, and you'll see by default SPSS calls it var0001, something like that. Uh, we've been told to call this sales. So um, let's try that again. There we go. It's kind of annoying. There we go. We got that in. Now let's go back and we, we have one variable, uh, which is the sales, but we have to tell SPSS uh, what the material was. So I said uh, we're going to use one for plastic and two for metal. So I'm just going to type one ten times and we'll type two ten times. And then let's go back to our variable view. And let's change this variable from sales to material. And we have to, I guess, double click on this. So we can get rid of the old one and then type in material. It'd be nice to have some meaningful labels at this point. So to get those meaningful labels, we'll just go check on the value labels box. And you'll see once you do that, you get some dots and you can check on that. So we're going to say value 1. The value 1 indicates plastic, and the value 2 indicates metal. And once you've done that, hit OK. And when you go back to your data view, you'll see that plastic and metal have been inserted. If not, you need to go up to View and Value Labels. And you'll see that that toggles whether you see the number or the uh, meaningful label there. So we've just done step one. I'm going to move this over. Um, part B says construct a box plot and air bar plots comparing, comparing the distribution of sales for plastic and metal. So let's go make a box plot. We're going to go up to graphs, then we're going to go to legacy dialogues, and then down to box plot. The default is simple, and simple is good enough. Hit define. 
We'll copy in sales as the variable and material as the category axis variable. Go ahead OK. And what you'll see looks like we have 10 of each cases. That's very good. And then uh, here are the box plots. Now the first thing I see is an outlier. And outliers always make me a little bit nervous. So that's this two there is indicating it's observation number two that is the outlier. And it's just a value of 360. So the first thing I think of is that I must have typed it wrong, but I come back to the data and sure enough, 360 is correct. All right, now beyond that, what you see is that the median sales for plastic is much higher than the median sales for metal. So it looks like plastic systematically sells better than metal. So uh, we've just completed that, that exercise. Um, well, we didn't do the air bar plots. Um, I'll show you the air bar plots. So we'll go up to graphs, legacy dialogues, and we're going to go to air bar. And the menu is identical um, to that of the box plots. We'll put sales in the variable box and material in the category axis box. We really haven't learned about air bar plots yet. Uh, we will learn about them in chapter 9. So don't worry about it if you don't understand them now. Uh, but what an air bar plot does is it plots the mean level of sales for each and then it, it um, plots a 95% confidence interval. So um, this just is a reflection of the sampling variation around, uh, around this mean. Okay, again, we're going to love these come chapter 9. Don't, um, don't worry about them now. Moving on to part C. Use analyze compare means to compute the means and standard deviations for both plastic and metal. So let's, uh, let's just follow the instructions. We're going to go to analyze and then compare means. Within here, we will use means. So go check off means. Sales is going to be your dependent variable. Material is the independent variable. Compare means is one of the most useful um, functions in all of SPSS. I, I use it you know, probably more often than just about any other function in SPSS. If you go into options, it gives you a list of all the descriptive statistics that it will compute. You'll see that by default we get the mean and standard deviation as well as the number of cases. So we really don't have to do anything here, but if we'd wanted something else like the min or the max, then we would, um, we would definitely have to come here. So what this is going to do is compute the um, mean and standard deviation of sales for each value of material. So go ahead, hit OK, and we'll see what we get. So what we see is that plastic sells 403 on the average, metal is 390. You see the standard deviations. So our conclusion is the same as with the box plot and the air, bars, air bar plots, namely that we sell more when we use plastic. Notice that 403 is where this dot is on the air bar plot. The 390 corresponds to that mean on the air bar plot. So we've just completed part C. Which material seems to have higher sales? Well, looks like we sell more with plastic. Note, we really should be doing a significance test here. You will do that for this problem come chapter 10. So rather than making a separate video in chapter 10, why don't we do the significance test now? So um, don't worry about this until chapter 10. You can come back and watch it later. Uh, but let's, uh, let's put that video in now, and, and if you want to watch it, it's not going to hurt you. So um, let's go up to Analyze. We're going to go to Compare Means again. And now we want to go to Independent Sample T-Test. So we use the Independent Samples T-Test when you have uh, two independent samples. In this case, we have a uh, sample of stores that have plastic and a sample of stores that have metal. Sales will be the test variable. Earlier, we've been calling this a dependent variable. Now it's the test variable. I kind of wish SPSS we're a little bit more consistent in their um, labeling of these boxes. Material is going to be the grouping variable. 
And at this point, you will probably be a little bit confused. So SPSS won't let me hit OK. Why won't it let me hit OK? Well, you're going to see some question marks that we have to fill in. I, th I think this is um, a kind of poor software design. Uh, SPSS should be um, good enough to figure out that this thing has two values and we want to compare them, but um, it's not going to do that. So we have to click on, let me show you where I clicked, Hit, click on define groups, and you have to define your groups. So recall that I typed one as plastic and two as metal. Go ahead, continue, and you see now that we're comparing uh, groups one and two within material. Go hit OK. And this is what you get. So we start out with some descriptive statistics. We get the mean, we get the standard deviation, we get the sample sizes, just as we got above. It also gives us the standard error, which we'll learn about in chapter 8. First thing to note is that the standard deviations are not that different. Now in chapter 10 we'll learn about uh, Levine's test for the equality of variances. The trick to this output, by the way, is to read all the labels very carefully. So this little box is going to test whether the variances of the um, of the two samples are equal. Now the p-value is 0.6, which is greater than 5%. We can't reject that. So we don't have any evidence to say that there's a significant difference in the variance of the two. Therefore, we're going to assume equal variances. Now if we go over um, following this equal variance row, and let's look at the heading. So this says t-test for the equality of means. So we're testing the null hypothesis that the means are equal. We'll see that the p-value in the sig column is not significant. Actually, it's not significant in uh, using either the equal variance or the unequal variance um, uh, row, and we'll discuss these in detail come chapter 10. Now, uh, at this point, what we're going to conclude is that we don't have enough evidence to say that the means are different. So despite uh, some directional evidence, here's some directional evidence suggesting that plastic works better than metal, uh, we don't have, an, you know, the sample size really isn't large enough to be able to say that plastic is indeed better than metal. Now, I'm going to um, note one thing. Recall that there was an outlier. Now, that would, the effect of that outlier is to inflate the variance of the plastic stores. Now, maybe there was something weird about that store that um, you know, was particularly small, it wasn't like the others, or perhaps uh, the display wasn't right, or, um, you know, for, if, if we could come up with a solid justification for removing that out outlier, um, we could then, you know, I'm just gonna go hit delete, um, rerun this. So let's go rerun it. So we'll go compare means, independent sample t-test again. Go hit OK. What you'll see now is that the standard deviations are right on top of each other. Uh, the means are now quite a bit different, and we now have significant differences. Uh, so that, you know, wh whether we have significant differences or not depends on whether we include that outlier. So if, if we have a solid justification for removing that one case, then we can remove it. Otherwise, we're going to need a much, much larger sample. So again, don't worry about this chapter 10 stuff or the chapter 9 stuff if, um, if we're not at that point in the course yet. Um, and uh, that's it.